story appears ordinary until you see the core side of it. And what you're looking for is a story behind the news. We bring it to you from Lagos, the commercial capital of Nigeria. Giving you all sides and political stories around the clock. Every detail from the start line to the final whistle. Core TV News, expanding your view. Hello there, welcome to Court TV Primetime News. I am Frank Omalape. In a major story, Ayuba Waba emerges new Labour Congress chairman after winning a keenly contested election. Also in this program, the All Progressive Congress knocks President Jonathan over immigration tragedy gifts. And Nigeria's First Lady, Patience Jonathan, insists the President must complete two terms in office. Outside Algeria, Vana Uchu's president, Badwin Lungsdal, calls for international help as cyclone pan ravages country. Thank you tonight for joining us on Court TV News. Uh, Yuba Waba of the Medical and Health Workers Union is the new president of Nigeria Labour Congress after winning a keenly contested election in Abuja. He beat his sole challenger, Joseph Ajairo, of the National Union of Electricity Employees with a margin of 495 votes to achieve the feat. The announcement comes almost 72 hours after Labour activists reconvened for a delegate's conference that initially ended in chaos. As early as 8 a.m. on Thursday morning, the over 3,000 delegates to the reconvened conference had gathered at the Eagle Square. The delegates, drawn from over 40 affiliate unions, came with great expectations and eagerness to get the long overdue process over with. You don't make one mistake twice, and I think the credentials committee we put in place after the Bush election, like you said, has done a very good job to ensure that everybody at least accepts the outcome of today's election with a free mind. Amidst overwhelming security, voting commenced at a few minutes past 5 p.m. and continued into the early hours of Friday, lasting for over 10 hours. Then came the sorting and counting process, which took almost another 24 hours, beginning on Friday morning and ending in the early hours of Saturday. But it was not all smooth sailing, as one of the agents representing Joe Ajairo tried without success to incite a reenactment of the chaotic scene witnessed the last time. Finally, it was time to announce the winners and the new NLC leadership. Two contestants for the position were one, Ajairo Joseph. Ajairo Joseph scored 3,000, sorry, 
1,000 per mil. Those are total balls cast. 3,000. Uh, is called 1,400 volts out of the 3,105 volts cast. The second contestant, Ayuba Wapa, he scored 1,695 volts. And he stands the winner of this election for this position of Congress President of the Congress within the next term of four years, inshallah. Then came the former president's valedictory speech, followed by the inaugural speech of the new president, who promised to work for the good of Nigerian workers. Let me, before introducing you, to the new president and his team, extend our very sincere gratitude to Nigerian workers and particularly the delegates. Let us also extend our gratitude to the law enforcement agencies that have rallied around us, supported us to ensure that this time around we got it right. And indeed, we got it right. This is the only way. Nigeria Labour Congress can now face the general election and the politicians to tell them that they must get it right because we have been able to get it right. On behalf of myself and my outgoing executive council, I congratulate the newly elected executive and it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you the president of the Nigeria Labour Congress and his team. And the president is in the person of Comrade Ayuba Pilugus Waba. That whatever you are putting today shall not be in vain. Amen. It shall be the beginning of good things for Nigerian workers. Amen. It should be the beginning of progress. Amen. And together, we'll be able to build a labor movement that is first of its kind in Africa and that can compete with all labor centers across the world. For us, we make this solemn commitment to the fact that the constitution of NLC shall be a whole, the principle of fairness, justice, and equity shall be a whole, and therefore we'll subject also ourselves to the rule of law. The eventful NLC delegate election has come and gone, and observers within and outside the labor movement will be waiting to see how the new leadership manages the fallout of the 11th delegate conference. Basia Ye. Core TV News, Abuja. The All Progressive Congress has accused President Nicolas Jonathan of taking political advantage of calamities that have befallen Nigeria under his watch, saying giving five million naira each to family that lost a relative in the immigration recruitment exercise after one year is not only belated but aimed at scoring cheap political point. In a statement issued in Lagos by its national publicity secretary, Lam Mohammed. The party says it wonders why it took the president one year to act on the promise he made to the families, adding that if not for the forthcoming elections, the president would have simply ignored the families in his usual style. The party says the Minister of Interior, Abba Moro, who presided over the death, still in office, is virtually dancing on the graves of those innocent youth. The APC describes as utterly reprehensible, immoral, and wicked for the Jonathan-led administration to seek to make political gains out of the situation. And now the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Mohammed Bahari, has promised to alleviate the plight of pensioners across the country if elected as president. General Bahari spoke while receiving a petition signed by a group of ex-servicemen protesting their treatment by the PDP administration in the country. A statement issued by the party's case in team quotes the presidential candidate as saying that it was wrong to allow sit senior citizens who have served the country with zeal and patriotism in their youth to be subjected to indignity and suffering while waiting to be paid their gratuities and pensions. 
Buhari added that if elected president, he will invoke provisions of Article 1.5 of the APC manifesto to ensure that entitlement will be worked out and paid on the effective date of retirement while pension will follow as that went due. Vice President Amadi Sambo has called for unity among ethnic nationalities, making up northern Nigeria. This, he says, is the only way to the north can prove that its existence is not by accident of colonial history. The Vice President said he is in Kaduna has the 56th anniversary lecture of the Arewa Consultative Forum. Sambo was represented by Governor Mokhtar Yeru noted that the interrelationship of the various groups in northern Nigeria predates colonial conquest and the struggle for self-rule. The theme of this lecture, the North and the Nigerian Federation, the past, present and the future, is appropriate coming at a time that we have to reflect on our past to shape our present and prepare us for the future challenges. It will provide historical links to the past and reawaken the consciousness of the present generation to the unity, love and oneness, oneness which the North has stood for while laying a cohesive path for the future prosperity of the region. It is imperative to state that the North did not exist by accident of colonial history. Actually, to be frank to all of us, the northern Nigeria, we need to put ourselves together and then we need to look at things the way they are. Uh, if you look at it, any time that we have a gathering for the northern Nigeria, we only look at the first and always look at it. We have done this before, we have done this before. But there is a, a missing or there is a gap or there was a gap between the first and the present and also how to project the future. So we have to make use of the past and also look at the present and then find a way of looking at the future so that we can have a good future. But at the moment, all the indices that we can look at in Nigeria, in Nigeria today, the north as it is, we cannot be the way that we are before in the, uh, during the First Republic. But it is left for us now, all the leaders, all the other people to come together and look at all the issues and forget about the religious differences that we have, the uh, tribal differences that we have, and also the political differences that we have, so that we can come together and face the North and then also revive the North, and the North should become what it was before. Speaker of the House of Representatives, Aminu Tambwa, has said the North should concentrate on working for its progress and thrive in Nigeria. The governorship candidate of the All Progressive Congress in Sakwatu was speaking at this 56th anniversary lecture of the Arewa Consultative Forum in Kaduna. Tambwa said he was eagerly looking forward to a region which would break free from the shadows of pervasive violence and collapse industry. The virtues of democracy and the peaceful transition of government in a free and fair election. It is always wrong to judge people based on their current challenges. A more reasonable approach will be to look at their antecedents, their past history, their crisis management skills, their potentials of recovery. There is no doubt that before long, the North will overcome its challenges and rise again. And as the debate on whether to use card reader machines rages on, Ekiti State is no doubt playing host to some of the proponents and antagonists expectedly across party lines. The APC and the PDP have been at loggerheads on the success of the mock exercise as Enola Jai and Duro Fashi, National Assembly candidate from the APC and PDP respectively, argue out the issue. A correspondent, Rashid Rashid, has details. The usage or not of the card reader machines in the forthcoming elections has generated reactions. In Ekiti State, the issue has once again pitched the APC and the PDP against each other. According to Duru Fashei, a PDP senatorial candidate, the card reader is not tested and must not be used for the general election. It has been using earlier. It will have checked my practices in the elections. Then they will have been able to see the positive and negative part of it and the correct, do a necessary correction. But what we are seeing is not this type of election that we, we experiment that kind of machine. 
Edney Olajayi, a House of Representatives candidate under the All Progressives Congress, however, dismisses fascist claim as self-serving. If we neglect to use card readers that we've spent millions of dollars purchasing as a nation, it clearly defines the kind of nation that we're running right now. A nation without a vision and without the, the, the impetus to actualize its mission. If we've purchased card readers, were we dreaming when we thought of that uh, decision to buy them? And if we bought them, why is it that as a nation we don't care about how we spend taxpayers' money? The duo, however, stuck to their guns on the issue. What of if you get there with your PVC, that issue by a genuine PVC, and you get there and the market fumble, will you be differentiated? What's the alternative they are going to make for this? I make up to now, they've never tell us anything. When is the time that will be right to start a good thing? The truth about the card reader is that those who are proposing now not to use it, they have their reasons, and those reasons are not for the well-being of the average Nigerian. The debate on the use of the card reader for the elections, however, promises more interesting dramas and will likely go to the wire. Rashid Rashid, or TV News, Adoe Kitty. And now the PVC distribution, which has witnessed low turnouts, making Ogun State the least out of the 36 states of the Federation, is one of many challenges the state government and the state chapter of the electoral empire is battling with. Although the ANEC in the state says it is working to overcome the challenge. The resident electoral commissioner in the state, Sami Bitoya, attributed this to the low percentage of eligible voters' turnout. Olaji Mikola Atiji took up a cross-section of the resident of Habelkota, the Ogun state capital, to affirm the electoral umpire's claim. Both the electoral umpire, INEC, has said it has achieved 80% of PVC distributions nationwide. Some states are still insisting that there is a low turnout of PVC distribution in their states, respectively. And Ogun state is one of those states with 50.1 percentage of this distribution as of four days ago. Even though the governor of the state, Vikila Mose, and some of the top political leaders in the state are not seen this as encouraging enough, and the state's rank has attributed this low turnout to eligible voters not coming out to get their PVCs. I'm on the streets of Abel Hotel to get reactions from this president on how true these affirmations are. With several complaints trailing the distribution of permanent voter cards in Ogun State, including the state's governor, Ibikunle Amosu, as well as top political leaders from different parties, this is certainly not the best of times for the electorate, considering that the general elections is just two weeks away. But as we speak today, the card they brought originally, and that is where the problem is, we have two or three issues now. The first one is that the card they brought about 1.1 million in November. On my honor, about 600 of those cards doesn't belong to Ogun State. In Ogun State, up until the time of postponement, there was only 40% distribution of PVCs. I mean, are we going to say that we're going to have a free and fair election where 60% of people who are willing to vote are disenfranchised? Are we going to have a lopsided distribution and then say that it is a free and fair election? Despite the widespread dissatisfaction with the exercise, some residents were able to obtain theirs without delay. I, I may not believe that uh, INEC is trying to deny some uh, members of that right. I think it still boils down to what I call uh, lapses from the end of uh, the electoral body. Very easy. Even they brought it for me. Okay. Well, some people have been saying that um, the state has recorded a, a very low turnout of PVC collection. They are lying. I think I'm one of the lucky ones. I went there the first time. I saw my name and I picked it up. It was very easy for me. It don't really stress me to get my PVC. I got it easily. But this one say the stress involved has discouraged them from going back to their... No, 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 no. Actually, I've tried my best to get it from my, uh, what's it called, my ward. And uh, it's, very, um, it's very hard for me to get it whenever I go there. They tell me it's either the, it's either they tell me it's not ready or uh, the number of people I, I, I eventually meet there will be very, very so my numbers. I won't be able to wait again. When I went there last week, they told me to come back on Friday. Yes, tomorrow. I guess tomorrow. So I pray I will go back down and check. Anyway, I have, I have already tried to get my PVC for about uh, 30, 30 times now, four times. 
So I went there. But I couldn't get, but I can't to take my PPC. Okay, I'll get. I'll go and get. I'll go tomorrow, I'll go and try them. I'll get. I'll go last week, Friday. Yeah. And no talk any time. So why then? Are you willing to go? I know. But at the go separate, I don't tire. I've already got there. Then tell me sir, I should come back. Say you never come out. Are you sure you went? Yeah. Uh, so when did they ask you to come back? They say maybe they're not, they're not giving me time, sir. According to INEC, as a 9th of March 2015, over 425,000 PVCs are yet to be collected out of the registered voters of 1 million. INEC further said out of the 1 million men for the state, total PVCs distributed stands at over 899,000. Meanwhile, percentage of collected PVCs based on the PVC received exceeds 5%, while those yet to be collected based on eligibility is 50%. Meanwhile, low turnout of voters has continued to trail the collection of permanent voter cards in a Dutch state, despite the section of the collection date recently announced by the Independent National Electoral Commission. The usual rush of are often associated with the collection of the PVCs in a Dutch state is now at its lowest ebb since the beginning of the exercise. Here's the report. As the elections draw near, some residents of Edo State Capital Benin City say the situation of the distribution of the PVCs has improved, especially compared to when it started. If I had not lost that card, uh, I think the process would have been milder. But I lost the card, I had to take some other extra effort to get the um, clarification and the card presented. Besides that, others that came with a TVC. Yeah, one was okay. It was just in a total of some seconds, minutes, they will get years and they will go. The almost card are yet to be picked up, but residents insist that there has been an improvement in the distribution. There has been a lot of publicity over it. But it's just that sometimes when you come, they will tell you the card is not around, you have to come back. There's no pretended and all that. But as I came in here and they gave me my own happy about it. Efforts made by Court TV News to speak to some of the electoral officers, however, prove a body as they are set to be in a meeting to strategize on how the elections will go at the Commission's office in Benin City. Though the Abuja announcement by INEC that over 80% of Nigerian voters are already in possession of their PVCs, which indicates that a larger part of the country is prepared for the Richard Jude forthcoming elections, is a thing that shows that the various extensions by INEC has indeed achieved a result. The watching Court TV primetime news. After the break, Nigeria's first lady, Patience Jonathan, insists the president must complete two terms in office. Find out more after this timeout. Stay with us. From time immemorial, women have bet life, shaped character, and by extension, influenced the society. Morimi of Ife, a Moten of Benin, Queen Aminat of Zaria, all women of influence and power. Whether it's before election, after election. How ironical. Women being so powerful, yet have few grounds in decision making. They see you as weak, and I see you as a wife to a man. We are talking women in politics. A woman will be bold enough to stand up and say, I want to become president of Nigeria. Only on Core TV News. If you just join us, this is Court TV Primetime News live from our Lagos studios. A recap of our top stories now. Ayuba Waba emerges new Labour Congress chairman after winning a keenly contested election. Also, the All Progressive Congress knocks President Jonathan over immigration tragedy gifts. And Nigeria's First Lady, Patience Jonathan, insists the President must complete two terms in office. 
You can also reach us on our social media platform, like our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash Court TV News. You can also follow at Court TV News NG. And for live streaming, log on to www.youtube.com forward slash Court TV. Leave your space, the news. The presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, Muhammad Bahari, has promised to alleviate the plight of pensioners across the country if elected as president. General Bahari spoke while receiving a petition signed by a group of ex-servicemen protesting their treatment by the PDP administration in the country. A statement issued by the party's case and team coached the presidential candidate as saying that it was wrong to allow senior citizens who have served the country with zeal and patriotism in their youth to be subjected to indignity and suffering while awaiting to be paid their gratuities and pensions. Bahari added that if elected president, he will invoke provisions of Article 1.5 of the APC manifesto to ensure that entitlements will be worked out and paid on effective date of the retirement while pensions will allow a follow as that when due. And now the issue of the age has been put on the front burner by some of those campaigning for the re-election of President Golub Jonathan as one of the reasons Nigerians should not vote for the all-progressive uh, Congress presidential candidate Mohamed Buhari. This was as understandably led to a war of words between the two camps. Our reporter, Uluashi Adigeke, takes a look at the issue in this report. Microsoft Encounter defines age as the length of time that somebody or something has existed, usually expressed in years. By United Nations standards, old age is from 60 years, which is the average age of Nigeria's president in a fourth republic until now. This is what the same dictionary defines as gerontocracy, a system of governments in which elders are chosen as rulers. According to the Electoral Act, to become a president in Nigeria, an interested candidate must be at least 40 years old. Though. There is no maximum age of who should be president of the nation. Ekiti State Governor Ayofayoshi believes the 73-year-old All Progressives Congress presidential candidate, Muhammad Buhari, is too old to govern the nation. You, General Buhari, is too old. Sicknesses, ailments, problems comes with age. But at a meeting of the National Association of Nigerian Students, Southwest Chapter, Governor Rotimi Amechi of River State has this response for Fayoshi and others who think like him on the issue. While the politicians have divergent views on the issue based on party affiliations, the people are also not faring better. This nation does not need someone like Buari. Buari is too old for this nation. They say Buari is sick. Buari is sick. See me. I don't mind. If someone is old and is performing, I don't mind is it. We know him that he's a good leader because he has done it before. We need a president that is not the somebody that old. Irrespective of age, the Nigerian electorate will in two weeks give their verdict on who will lead the nation for the next four years. Uluwashi Yadigoki, Court TV News, Lagos. The wife of President Golok Jonathan, Patience Jonathan, has insisted that her husband will remain in office for eight years to complete his two terms in office despite the opposition. The First Lady made declaration during the People's Democratic Party Women Rally under the auspices of Women for Change and Development in Initiative in Benin Ado State. Uh, she was accompanied by national and state leaders of the party uh, for women drawn from different support groups across the state will turn out for an event as early as 9 a.m. They, however, began to leave the stadium at about 1.30 p.m. when the first lady arrived at the Samuel Gwemudia Stadium venue of the rally. Unable to bear the scourging heat, two women fainted but were later revived by a medical team provided by the party. Addressing the women, she says the presidency had been occupied for eight years by other geopolitical zones and wondered why the South-South should be denied the same opportunity. She also noted that the Jonathan administration had performed creditably in various sectors such as transport, 
her education and by her assessment was satisfactory. And now the All-Progressive Congress in Ondo State has described the postponed general elections by INEC as a blessing in disguise. Speaking at a sensitization rally in Ikaram Akoko, Akoko Northwest local government area of the state. The party says the country that must be used as APC will coast uh, to victory at the forthcoming general election in Ondo State. A correspondent, Rashid Rashid, has details. Still drumming support for the Buhari or Shimbaju candidature, the Yondo State APC subgroup Trust and Justice at a sensitization rally across some Akoko communities like Ibaram, Ikaram, Irusu and Ajawa Akoko says the party will give PDP run for its money come March 28. You can see our roads, the condition of roads here are bad, and you can hear what people are chanting, people are chanting change all over. People are, people are tired of the people deceiving people, which is a PDP. For the past six years, we don't even see the dividends of the administration in this our community. Come March 28, everybody is ready to march for Buari. Although the postponement of the general elections generated various reactions, however, APC House of Assembly candidate Suleiman Jamil says it is a blessing for the APC. It's a blessing in disguise for APC. If you notice what has been happening since the postponement, you discover uh, uh, the victory of uh, APC in all the elections has been ordained by God. First, you see, they are, after the postponement, you have the decampment of uh, about six House of Rep from PDP to uh, APC, the decommitment of uh, former governor of uh, Anambra, Setimba Denuju, from PDP to APC, the decommitment of some other notable politicians from PDP to APC in other states. The group, however, once against Reagan in understate as they strongly support the usage of the card reader. We have grown enough to conduct free and fair elections in Nigeria. And one of the criteria is to use car reader. It has been tested, and of course, it has been generally accepted that they should use a car reader. What else? You know, when they first you know, propose, you know, made the proposal, they table it before the National Assembly, and then they all agreed. So he signed, he happened to read now that they, use, they should use the car reader. And of course, bringing the car readers now, he now discovered that he too allow a uh, 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 rigging. He's going to check rigging. That is why they said they are not going to allow the candidate that to be used. And the state will no doubt be a political battleground between the APC and the PDP-controlled state government as the general election looms. Rashid Rashid or TV News, Ikarama Koko. Away from that now, the 2015 edition of the Hello Lagos program has once again been held with a charge to the society to take care of its youth for a sustainable national development. A correspondent patient's Ajiboye was at the Kenya venue of the symposium filing this report. Hello Lagos, an initiative of the Lagos State Ministry of Health, responsible for adolescent and youth health care, had this year's symposium, where young ones have once again been reminded of the essence of living an issue-free age. Guest speaker Jide Ologun says, young adults are very delicate and should be handled with the required care for sustainable national development and an amicable social order. Children don't lack capacity, they lack teachers. And I have also discovered that as we progress more into civilization, we constantly assume and claim that some virtues belong to the old generation class. That is not correct. The principle of success, they are the same through all generations. Some of the participants at the event had this to say on what they are taking away from the symposium. The program is a very good program for like for young people like us. It's an inspiring program and it's beneficial to we young children. It prepares us for our tomorrow life and it's a very good one. I must commend it. I'm happy to be a member of this of this um, club because it has been useful for me. I've been able to get involved into different activities and I've discovered my, child, my talent through this club and it has been helping me a lot. One of the organizers of the event says the initiative is poised to ensure the well-being of adolescents. The Lady Girls has actually um, helped a lot of youths to discover their talent and also to educate them about what um, uh, life is 
you know, as, 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 as far as sex is, sex, uh, sex is actually concerned, you know, and then it's also a medium for them to um, network among themselves. They have what they call uh, friendly uh, activities here that, you know, all, most of them can come from every part of the world, wherever they had, you know, to actually, you know, come, talk, network, and hear I me. Mean, get exposed to a lot of things as concerned the youth and also they address a lot of issues that are actually affecting you know the youth. And Adolescents being neither adults nor children can make decisions that will either make or mar them. The onus therefore lies on them to either pay now and play later or play now and pay later because whether or not they make plans, time flies. Patience Ajiboye, Core TV News, Lagos. You're still watching Court TV Primetime News. We take another break now. Be back with sports and other stories. Do join us again. Every day, every hour, and every minute, news break in Nigeria. Things happen so fast, it's most times difficult to track and comprehend them. But that's what we do right here on DJ360. 2015, would you want to come back again? It's like asking Jesus Christ if he knew he was going to die, will you, come, will you want to come back as the savior of the world again? We do not just help you track the stories, we we'll break them down, explore all the angles, analyze the issues so that you can fully comprehend the stories and use them to make the right decisions. And in business tonight, the Senate in plenary has approved the harmonized version of the 2015-2017 median term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy paper. The upper legislative chamber approved the report after the chairman of its committee on finance, Senator Ahmed McCarthy, presented a harmonized version by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the committee. McCarthy said the conference committee adopted 190 naira exchange rate and $53 per barrel oil benchmark as well as statutory transfer of $368 billion U.S. dollars. The conference committee adopted the Senate's version which has 190 naira as exchange rate to the dollar. On the oil price benchmark, whereas the Senate passed it on $52 per barrel, the House passed it on $54 per barrel. The conference committee agreed to recommend a benchmark of $53 per barrel and statutory transfer. The committee adopted the House version, which reduced the statutory transfer from uh, $411.8 billion US dollar to $368 billion US dollars. And in sports now, West Brom uh, manager Tony Polish masterminded a victory against his former club as the baggies edge out a uh, lackluster stroke. Brownie Day ahead of the decisive goal earlier, and but the host could have had more in a dominant display that lifted then 11 points clear of the drop zone. The visitors won police managed from 2006 until 2013 and molded into an effective Premier League outfit failed to muster a clear chance. Peter Crouch, black header, was the closest they came to equalising. Stoke have carved out a reputation as West Brom's budget team in recent years, winning all five of their previous Premier League visits to the Hawthorns. Four of those victories were plotted by police, but this time the track suited Tuckmaster Tuck's success in the opposite dugout as he continued his impressive start as Baggy's boss. And now Bayern Munich moved 14 points clear at the top of the Bundesliga as Robert Lewandowski scored twice to secure a sixth successive league win. Thomas Muller called in a superb opener against Wedna Bremen before David Alaba floated home a free kick at the end of the first half. Santiago Garcia had a second half cross shot tipped over by Bayern's debutant keeper Pepe Reina after the break. But Lewandowski headed a third goal before uh, tapping in late on. To complete a satisfying afternoon for Bayern coach Pep Guardiola, captain Philip Hlein made his comeback as a late substitute after four months out with a broken ankle. 
Guardiola's side will reach the Champions League quarterfinals with a 7-0 demolition of Chucked Donuts and West they have dropped just 11 points in their 25 Bundesliga matches this season. They were too strong for mid-table brimming even though Marlon Neuer, Holger uh, Batstuba, Frank Ribery and Arjun Robin were rested. And outside Algeria now, Vanuatu's president Badwin Lozdel has called for the help of international community after Cyclone Pam Brief through the Pacific Archipelago. The president Lonsdale made this call while speaking in Japan at the UN's World Conference on Disaster Risk and Reduction. Speaking with a heavy heart, Lonsdale described the uh, incident as a calamity. Aid agencies say the cyclone, which veered off its expected course on Saturday and struck populated area, has caused complete devastation. Reports also say eight people are confirmed dead, but it is feared dozens more may have been killed. Located about a quarter of the way from Australia to Hawaii, Vanuatu has a population of 267,000 spread over 65 islands. About 47,000 people live in the capital, Port Vila. Many residents there are spending a second night in emergency shelters after finding their homes destroyed. The UN's Office for the Coordination for Humanitarian Assistance described the storm which brought winds of up to 270 km and torrential rain as extremely destructive. And now the leader of Britain's main opposition, Labour Party, Ed Miliband, who hopes to become Prime Minister on May 7, has urged voters to choose hope over fear at a rally for activists. Miliband is fighting a Prime Minister David Cameron for the keys to Derwin Street in a knife-edge race, which commentators predict could result in another coalition or a minority government for Britain. The centre-left party, which governed Britain from 1997 to 2010 under Tony Blair and Gordon Brown, said they want to share the profits of economic recovery more evenly across society and protect the state-run national in the health face of the weak, uh, service. But always weak in the face of the strong. And it's certainly not leadership. To claim to be a strong leader, but to refuse to defend your record in front of the British people in a TV election debate. Their current plan is to cut public spending back to the levels of the 1930s, before there was an NHS. Now this week, the budget's coming up, and no doubt they'll put some window dressing on it. But we know what their plans mean. It means education cut, the NHS undermined, it means social care devastated, our infrastructure crumbling, working families can't afford to take that risk, Britain can't afford to take that risk. This is not the future that our great country deserves. The next Labour government will put in place the right rules on immigration. But I'll tell you something else. This Labour Party, the next Labour government, will never cut ourselves off from the rest of the world. And we will never, ever sacrifice our tolerance, our openness, who we are as a country, what makes Britain great. You've been part of Court TV Primetime News. Just before we go, a recap of our top stories tonight. We told you that Ayuba Waba emerges new Labour Congress chairman after winning a keenly contested election. We also brought to you that the All Progressive Congress knocks President Jonathan over immigration tragedy gifts. And finally tonight, Nigeria's First Lady patients Jonathan and sixty President must complete two times in office. Well, it has been a show tonight. And many thanks for watching. I am Frank Omalape on behalf of uh, a new school. I say good night. <laughs>